Good morning, everybody. We're down here in southern Arizona. We're going to be doing some exploring around Tombstone this week. We started out at the back of the famous OK Corral. I'm sure many of you have heard of the famous gunfight at the OK Corral. There's a show going on right now. Those are the shots you can hear in the background. In spite of its name, the gunfight was only a 30-second shootout between several lawmen that included Virgil, Morgan, and Wyatt Earp, and Doc Holliday, against members of a group of outlaws called the Cowboys that included Billy Claiborne, brothers Ike and Billy Clanton, and brothers Tom and Frank McClary. The gunfight occurred about 3 p.m. on Wednesday, October 26, 1881. It's thought of as the most famous shootout in the history of the American West. Most people don't realize the gunfight didn't even take place within or next to the OK Corral. The shootout actually took place in a narrow lot on the side of C.S. Fly's photographic studio on Fremont Street, six doors west of the OK Corral's rear entrance. Some members of the two groups were initially only six feet apart. About 30 shots were fired in 30 seconds. In the end, Billy Clanton and brothers Tom and Frank McClary were killed. They were buried right here in these three graves in Boot Hill Graveyard. The town of Tombstone, Arizona got its start from the discoveries of Edward Shifflin. From his early childhood during the gold rush days, Shifflin was attracted to the thought of becoming rich from mining. In early 1877, he moved to Mojave County, Arizona. After a couple of months, he became disappointed and moved to southern Arizona. He used Fort Huachaca as his home base. There are a couple of different versions of the story here, but after returning from each trip into the desert, the soldiers would ask Ed if he found anything. He would always say no, but he was always confident that someday his luck would turn around. The doubting soldiers told him if you keep going out there alone, you'll only find your tombstone. That's where he got the name of his first claim in August of 1877. Next, we visited the old train depot. In 1880, the Southern Pacific Railroad arrived in Tucson, and then Vincent just a few months later. Tombstone was just 25 miles away by stage or freight teams. Tombstone was connected to Fairbank in 1903. Carpenters built the depot at the corner of 4th and Toughnut Streets in Tombstone. The El Paso and Southwestern Railroad line was eventually leased and later incorporated into the Southern Pacific Railroad. Today the tracks have been taken up, but the El Paso and Southwestern Depot in Tombstone is still there and is being used as a library and city offices. A retired Southern Pacific caboose and boxcar stand next to the building as a reminder of the importance of Tombstone's rich railroad history. Just around the corner is the world's largest rose tree. The rosebuds on this tree are just so tiny. In 1884, just one day after being married, a young miner named Henry Gee and his bride Mary left Scotland bound for Tombstone, Arizona. The couple lived at the Cochise boarding house until they were able to build a home. In 1885, Mary's family sent her a package with bulbs and root clippings from Scotland. Mary gifted one of the rose clippings to Amelia Adamson, who ran the boarding house where Mary and Henry had stayed. Mary and Amelia planted the rose clipping next to the woodshed where it just flourished. Today, its canopy covers over 5,000 square feet. It's been named in Ripley's Believe It or Not and in the Guinness Book of World Records. It's a cool stop for sure. I really enjoyed this. We started getting hungry, so we stopped in at Big Nose Kate's Saloon for some lunch. This place really had a fun atmosphere, and the burger I had was so good, it makes me hungry every time I think about it. Seriously. We ventured down the spiral stairs to the gift shop. This is where the former handyman dug out this hole in his room looking for treasure he believed to be buried under the floor. He spent many hours digging tunnels in the floor of his room that weren't discovered until after his death. One tunnel was said to have reached the abandoned shafts of the Tough Nut Mine. An interesting fact about Big Nose Kate's is, even though the restaurant is named after her, Big Nose Kate never stepped foot inside this saloon. Next, we ventured over to the Tough Nut Mine Tour. 
Amber was our guide for this. She had a lot of interesting information about the history of the mines in the area. This tour was a little different than some of the other sites to see and things to do in Tombstone, so I really enjoyed it. Our last stop of the day was the Shifflin Monument. The founder of Tombstone, Ed Shifflin, passed away at the age of 49 in a cabin near Cannonville, Oregon. His last wishes were to be buried in Arizona, a place that always remained close to his heart. At his direction, he wrote that he wished to be buried in the clothing of a prospector, along with his old pick and canteen near the mines he had discovered. That wish was carried out and burial was on this rocky point several miles west of Tombstone, where he had made his camp at the time of his discovery. As you can see, this is a monument of cemented rock that is 16 feet high and rests upon a foundation 20 square feet. They say, although you can't see it from the road, it can be seen from the car windows of the Fairbank Tombstone train. We're going to be headed back to camp now and we'll be making our plans for tomorrow. Talk to you guys later.